I want you to go ahead and get comfy today because we have a topic to cover that might be a little bit challenging and difficult. So settle in. I'm right here with you every step of the way. And just a quick side note, if you are easily triggered, the subject matter today could potentially be triggering. And as we begin to dive into today's show, you'll see what I mean. So if that's you and you feel triggered or uncomfortable with the subject matter, I want to encourage you to just skip this podcast and I will be back covering many of the normal for lack of a better word, normal topics that we cover on here, such as perimenopause, menopause, health, mental health, fitness, nutrition, exercise, all of those things. But we're going to venture off a bit today. Before we get started, I want to remind you that I am starting a brand new fitness membership. It's called Faith Plus Fitness Academy. This is for women over 40, 50 and above who would like to dive deeper into fitness and nutrition, have a set exercise routine that they can follow, and also some recipes and a meal plan that they can follow as well. There will be guest speakers. The faith part of the membership is uh, the Christian faith. That is my faith. I can promise you no one will be preaching. I won't be holding Bible studies, anything like that. And if the faith part of it is not something you're ready to really dive into, you can always skip over that content. There'll be plenty of fitness content in this membership. I'm keeping the price point very low so that it gives many women an opportunity. The reason that I'm including faith is twofold, really. First of all, I believe we have to take a holistic approach to health and fitness, and I'm going to talk about that more in this episode today. So I don't think that we have what I call buckets, where here's here I am going to work, here I am going to church, here I am taking a walk or going to the gym or fixing a meal. I feel like all of these things play a role in our health, our mental health, our emotional health, our physical health. And what I want to do is really just encourage women to deepen their faith and their walk with God. And even if this is something that's new to you, you haven't thought about it, there will be principles of the Christian faith that will help you in your health and fitness journey. So I hope that clarified a bit. If you want to learn more, the link to learn more about the Faith Plus Fitness Academy membership will be in the show notes, and I'll be talking about it more in coming episodes. So let's go ahead and dive in today. All right, we're going to be talking about safety and specifically safety for women of all ages. Many of you listening have daughters granddaughters, nieces, or even if you've not had children or grandchildren, perhaps you are married to somebody who has children, so you're a stepmom. Maybe you have a good friend where you're very close with her daughters. Um, Like I said, maybe it's a niece. So there's going to be benefit for in that area, but also for yourself, because these tips that I'm giving are for all women of all ages. So why am I diving into safety? Again, I want to take a holistic approach to health and fitness on this show. So we discuss everything from emotional and mental health, managing anxiety and depression, all the way to what foods to eat, um, overcoming belly fat, perimenopause, menopause, hormones, all of the things. But something I've not talked about is safety and protection and keeping yourself safe as a woman. I have noticed what seems to be, I have not dove into the statistics, so I can't say this exactly, but it seems like an uptick in crimes against women. So once again, um, this is a sensitive topic. If it's going to bother you, just like I said, tune out and catch the next podcast. No problem at all. But I guarantee that you will come away with something that you can use for yourself or a loved one in your life that may need this information or share this podcast with a loved one. 
So health and safety for women, again, I take an approach that is all encompassing. I feel like we have to address all of these different issues. What made me think of this is lately I've been doing very long walks to recover from my back surgery. It was encouraged by my surgeon. I love these walks. They're meditative. Um, sometimes I pray, I listen to podcasts, audiobooks. Sometimes I just take in nature. But one thing I am is very careful. So where my house is located, one direction you go is a little more isolated. Um, there's homes, but they're spread far apart. There's not much traffic. There's not much pedestrians or bicycles. The other way is the opposite, where it's, it's busier. There's a good walking path and a good bike path, so you don't feel like you're going to get hit by a car. But there's plenty of cars, pedestrians, people riding bikes. They're out and about. I'm walking past places like Trader Joe's. So I feel like I am well protected in a sense because it is a busy area. I also look very carefully at vehicles that are parked. So when I leave my house, I cross a bridge, across an arroyo, across a park. Many people park at the end, the dead end of the street. They come across the bridge and they walk their dogs in the park. So you will see vehicles parked there, especially first thing in the morning and in the evening. But if I see a vehicle um, that I just get a bad feeling about, I just get, I don't know, kind of an unease, I feel uncomfortable, I will make sure I'm not walking right next to that vehicle. Especially if I'm seeing, let's say there's a man parked there and he's just sitting in his car or standing outside his car, or maybe he's a little ways down and there's no pet with him, he's just by himself. I'll get kind of a funny feeling, I'll cross the street to the other side and I'll keep an eye on him and that vehicle as I am walking. I recently heard a story where a woman was out jogging here in the city. I live in Albuquerque and uh, someone tried to snatch her. Luckily, she, she got away. She was running in a more isolated path. And we do have isolated paths that run um, over and across arroyos and they're dirt paths. They're, they're nice to, to take a walk on because you don't have big crowds, but I've gotten to where I avoid those for that very reason. What we're going to focus on today has to do with ride shares. There has been an uptick in crimes, and I'm more familiar with what's going on with Uber, so that's where we will kind of settle in on and talk about today, and how you or your daughter or your granddaughter or all of you can keep yourself safe. Now, there's been instances where a car pulls up and a woman thinks that that is the Uber driver because of the timing. She jumps in and it's not somebody that's an Uber driver. It's somebody looking to take advantage of that situation, maybe outside of a bar or a club. And there have been crimes committed where it's not actually an Uber driver, but somebody basically posing as one. So having awareness there is important, but there's been an uptick in crimes committed against women, assaults committed against women by these rideshare drivers. So let's take a look at some of what's going on here, and then let's talk about the tips that are going to keep you safe. So as of September 2024, according to some statistics, I have not fact-checked this, but um, bear with me, there are several ongoing legal issues involving Uber drivers and crimes, including a surge of sexual assault lawsuits and even a murder allegation. So as of 2024, September, that is, there were 1,263 pending lawsuits in the Uber driver sexual assault category. This is a significant increase from the 387 cases that were pending in August. And it's one of the largest percentage increases in a single month for this type of crime. The lawsuits basically allege that Uber has failed to implement adequate safety measurements. Now, I don't know their safety measurements or how they vet a driver, so I can't speak into that. Um, that's something that I imagine 
they will be improving upon over time, especially as these allegations are coming up. There was even a murder allegation. An Uber driver was accused of murdering a woman in Indiana. I won't go into those details. They are rather upsetting, but that is, um, there is that allegation out there. There was an incident in June of this year where a driver in Washington was charged with second degree and first degree kidnapping. Uh, the driver had access to the Uber um, platform, was using the Uber platform, and they were removed after the incident. So those are a few of the things that are going on. Now, I'm going to talk about um, how to keep ourselves safe at any age. Uh, this information comes from Secret Service agent and author, and I hope I'm not mispronouncing her name, Evie Pampuras, I believe. So hopefully I'm not mispronouncing that name. She was recently on a Dateline show. It's a show where they update um, the listeners on various cases that are unfolding across the nation. And sometimes they include segments at the end concerning safety, safety as you travel, what to do if you're traveling and something happens, what is the um, equivalent of 911 in that country. This particular episode that I listened to, they talked about Uber drivers and being safe taking a ride with an Uber driver. So tens of millions of Americans use rideshare services. My husband and I do quite a bit because we Frankly, we don't like renting cars if we don't have to. We would just rather um, go about the city and out to dinner. We typically stay someplace where there's a lot going on, and then maybe we'll just take an Uber here or there to sightsee or to go to dinner. So I'm with my husband. I'm generally feeling safe. I still take a few precautions, make sure we're getting in the right vehicle, you know, take a look at that plate, but I'm not alone. But I have two daughters, and I know that they have used rideshare services, either with their friends, um, but I know one daughter had to use it alone when she was having car, uh, car troubles, and her car was in the shop, and she had to take an Uber to and from work, so she, she lives alone, and it was dropping her off at her apartment. And so uh, there's many instances like that. I know my daughter would be out with friends. Maybe they had a couple cocktails. They didn't want to drive. They tried to do the responsible thing. And that's the sad thing is many of these young women are trying to do the responsible thing or not even young women, women in general. Maybe they have been out with friends and they realize, you know what, I shouldn't be behind the wheel. So I am going to take the precaution of taking the Uber and keep myself and everybody else on the road safe. Well, that's the right thing to do, right? Right? Intuitively, we say that's the right thing to do. But unknowingly, they could be in some type of danger. So tens of millions of Americans use these services, and that number is growing by the day, by the month. But services like Uber and Lyft, they, they've gotten very popular. But there's been concern about these companies. How are they vetting the drivers? And like I said, I've not delved into that. I don't know their process. I just know that there has been an uptick of these cases being reported. Uh, according to Uber's uh, 2019 to 2020 stats and a safety report, nearly 4,000 sexual assaults were reported to the company. And of course, that's more as we move into the year 2024. So first of all, tip number one is simply to think of this driver as a stranger. Sometimes we trust a little bit too easily. And this is in no way victim blaming. There, there's no excuse for somebody to hurt an individual. There's no excuse for someone to assault, attack an individual. Uh, so there's no victim blaming here. But I think having a mindset of this is a complete stranger, so I need to take some extra precautions because sometimes there is a level of trust. We just kind of assume that a background check has been done. I've done that and, and you feel like, yeah, it, it's okay. I've taken hundreds of Uber drives, uh, rides and nothing's ever happened. So start to think of them as a complete and total stranger. So approaching the situation with caution. Um, you can say something like, what's your name? Um, who are you here to pick up? Because the app will tell you 
they'll they'll have a picture of the individual often they'll have the license number a picture of the car make sure all of this matches up and don't say are you here to pick up carol you know ask them who are you here to pick up make them say your name um stand a few doors away from your house so if you're being picked up at your home and this is particularly true if it's a, re a residence that's not an apartment because apartment buildings are often huge and so good luck finding you know out where somebody lives if the apartment building is huge but if you're in say a duplex or a home or you know town home or something such as that you want them to pick you up on a corner somewhere else or a few doors down so maybe stand away and then ping for the driver so it pings your location so it's not getting your exact address um, you should especially do this if you're going to be gone for quite some time for several hours uh, take a photo of the license plate that's another thing that you can do and i know that's a little bit uncomfortable as women i think we're taught especially from my generation not to offend but to keep yourself safe you need to do certain things that yeah the driver might be offended by like why are you taking a picture of my license plate i'm not going to do anything to you but it's okay if they see you do that that's an extra layer of protection it's also telling them hey i'm not an easy target here i'm aware i am totally aware um generally criminals uh in general not always they're looking for that that easy target where there's not a lot that they have to go through in order to get at that person so definitely um, taking a picture of that license plate and then text it don't just keep it to yourself but text it to your parent a friend and you know any type of relative a spouse I went on a photo shoot and I had to take an Uber and I had to go alone because, and this was a few years back, I was in, well, I did one in Dallas and one in Phoenix. And in both instances, the photographer did not want any friends or family in the room. Some photographers are like that. They want the model, um, and I wasn't alone because the makeup artist was there, so it was the three of us, but they don't want other people in the room when they're shooting or they want them to sit in a separate room. And so I just told my husband, just go sightseeing. And we took this precaution so that he would know the license plate number. He had that. And he was actually, you know, noting that as he put me in the vehicle and I drove off. A location sharing is something that you can do. You can turn that on, on your phone. And that way, friends and family can see where you are going. There was one of those cases of, it was actually the abduction case with Uber, where that's how the father was able to basically rescue his daughter, who had been abducted and assaulted by this driver, or allegedly, allegedly, I need to put that in there, that's, that's what he's been charged with. And he was able to find that location of his daughter through this sharing so it's something something good and oftentimes the young ones don't want to share their location they don't want they don't want anyone to know that i went to a club and hung out with my friends but this is an instance where there has to be that open communication you can turn it on with your friends and family. They can see where you're going. I talked about awareness and attention. This is something that's huge. I talked about how I use it on my walk. I use it in a parking lot, uh, scanning the parking lot as I walk to the car, being very careful getting in my vehicle. Who am I parked next to, especially if it's a van? I don't assume if there's a woman in the car that it's safe. Um, I actually knew a woman, I will not name her name, she told me this story many years ago, but she was almost abducted from the mall here in Albuquerque, and she was lured over by the girlfriend, and she, she fought, she absolutely fought, she got away, I don't know how she got away, but she got away, um, but you don't want to be that easy target, and once again, no blaming the victim, but you, you just want to have that awareness. What's in your purse or bag? Is there anything you can defend yourself with? There is apparently a spray. 
I don't recall what it is. It's sold at Lowe's. A friend was telling me about it. And it has both a really loud alarm and then a spray that just incapacitates uh, that person that's trying to um, do the assault. And uh, again, I don't know what this is called, and I will have to look in, into that a little bit deeper. I know that they have alarms. Um, those are kind of mixed reviews that, that could help or not help, depending on the situation. But it doesn't hurt to have a few things in your purse. What do you have? Keys, pen, um, maybe you have that alarm, maybe you have that spray, something um, that you can use. Now, when you're being dropped off, once again, if you are in a residence or a duplex or something like that where it's easy for the driver to see which house you're going into, don't have them drop you off there. Use a different address just a little bit down the street. Then when you get out of the car, you're not going to walk in front because if you walk in front, there's this thing where, okay, you're walking in front to get to your door and, and then the driver is behind you. You can't see what's going on. So you wanna walk all the way behind, take your time, walk away from where your front door is and wait for that car to drive off. You wanna be where you can see that car leaving, like it's gone. It didn't just creep down the street a little bit. It turned the corner, it's gone. So wait for them to drive off. So those are the tips that were shared on this particular episode. And I know this is very different from general health topics like nutrition, like exercise, like mindset that has to deal with our, our health. But once again, I believe things are holistic. They don't exist in a vacuum. We have to look at every aspect of our health. And part of our health is our safety and being safe as women. And as I see some of these stories that emerge, you may have seen the story that emerged about P. Diddy, the rapper, where for several years, you know, basically he, um, I'm not going to go into the whole case, you can look it up, but the abuse of, of women, um, the extortion, uh, the things that he has allegedly done that he's being charged with and being held in jail for, it really made me think about how women can be drawn in. And I know there was a reporter in the case that was talking about when she met him as a young reporter and he showed an interest in her and she was young and she was really flattered like oh my goodness this this famous singer this famous rapper this guy that seems bigger than life and he's interested in me and kind of lured her in and she got into a situation where he left and she was left with this strange, weird man. And the whole thing, she just, all of her warning bells, all of her warning signals began to go off. She got out of the situation. But she looks back now and said, I could have been one of these women that were victimized. They get groomed. They get pulled in. So I think as being women that are more mature, over 40, 45, 50, 60, 70, we've seen this, these things. We've had our own experiences over time. We've had close calls, or maybe we have survived an assault. And we have wisdom that we can share with the younger women. Because oftentimes when you're young, you just don't think anything bad will ever happen. It, it just seems like something that, oh, you know, statistically, that probably won't happen. And most people are nice. That probably won't happen to me. But trust me, I've been on social media a while. And when I first went on was when I started competing in bodybuilding. And so I'd be posting my pictures, I'd be doing photo shoots. And I had to really toughen up. Because Men would approach me and they would approach me under the ruse of, I'm, I'm a photographer, I would like to do this photo shoot, blah, 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 blah. And you can, you can get that sense of how they're grooming you, they're flattering you, they're pulling you in and you are, you're flattered. Oh, they want me for a photo shoot or they want me for a commercial or they want me for this or that. And this happened to me numerous occasions. I even had one incident where this was another man 
in the fitness community. He's a personal trainer. He's well known in Albuquerque. I'm not going to say the name. I'm not going to get myself in, in trouble here. But um, women here in the community are aware of him and his antics. And he reached out to me. He seemed perfectly fine. There, there was nothing in the conversation that would have led me to think, oh, this is going to be an issue with this man. Uh, but what happened was he told me, because I'm, I'm opening a new personal training facility, and I, would re I really need some personal trainers. You, you would be able to act independently, set your own hours, set your own pay. And at that time, I had gone out on my own. I was no longer working for a gym, and I was doing a lot of coaching of women either I was doing some remotely and then some I was renting out space in a local gym and doing it that way but he was offering me such a great deal so to speak on what I would need to pay for the rent to use his facility it, it was like super reasonable and the facility was gorgeous with everything I could potentially need so I went to meet up with him to have a discussion about this it quickly became clear during the discussion that he was not interested in business, that he had lured me there to hook up, and he had a wife and kids. Um, I later learned that he does this to many, many women, grooms them, pulls them in, including his own clients. So having an awareness of what can happen and I do believe, especially women of my generation, again, we were taught kind of to please, to go along with things, to not rock the boat. And it took me a long time to learn to rock the boat and learn to make a fuss when it was time to make a fuss. And to protect yourself, just be aware there are, there are predators. You, do, you don't need to walk around in fear, but once again, having that awareness. So I really hope this episode was helpful. Um, do leave a review. And if you enjoyed the program, a five-star rating would be wonderful. Follow the show. Reviews help in the algorithm. They help more people to find the podcast. And of course, if you are following the podcast, you will be notified each and every week when an episode is dropped Monday morning. If you have interest in Faith um, Faith Plus Fitness Academy, do go into the show notes and click the link. If you're having trouble finding that link, rather than me giving it to you, feel free to reach out to me. Um, Instagram is the best place. At Carol Cavino Fitness is my Instagram account. I am on Facebook. I'm not as active there. I, I got hacked a little over a year ago, and, and so I'm pretty um, low profile on there, but you can connect with me there. You can also send me an email, carol at carolcavino.com. Com. I don't have everything up on my website yet. I um, am still in the process of putting all the tech together. So just reaching out to me uh, via email or through a message would be the best way. So again, I hope this was helpful. Share it with a friend, share it with a loved one. And until we talk again, I wish you every blessing. Bye for now.